Good morning, insurance syndicate members. What's going on, everybody? Good morning, good morning, good morning. So excited to see y'all on here. We got an action-packed call. Um, you can tell I don't have anybody next to me. Uh, my, my good man, Merwin, is actually, he's speaking down in Tampa. I think he's literally on stage. Everybody give a little hand clap to Tony. He'll catch it after. Um, and so, yeah, he's not with us this morning, but y'all, we're going to get right into it, and it's going to be freaking awesome. Um, real quick, before we do bring on our guests, though, if you could, I put it right in the comments. Please, uh, Grant StreamYard, um, your permission or Facebook, the permission to view your StreamYard comments would love to be able to see those on the screen. Um, I also apologize. The the landscaping crew is is getting going behind me. So if you guys do hear that, that's hey, that's what it is. If you don't hear it, even better. My mic must be pretty good. Um, and so weekly win and everybody put your weekly wins here in the comments. Good morning, Tom. See this right here, like Facebook user. I, I don't know who you are, but good morning, Facebook user. What's up, Christian? Um, weekly win for me. So you guys, I mean, I'm already rocking my softball gear. So you guys already know, got the kind of the, the captains or the coaches together yesterday. And so we were planning our flights and getting everything ready for Vegas in December. We got some fresh new uniforms coming all Nike, everything. Um, and we're actually, you guys should see the Airbnb we're looking at. I'm like, man, if we're going to Vegas, we might as well go. So that's, that's my weekly win. We are getting ready to gear up and take a, a squad out to Vegas to, to make a run at worlds, um, for softball for anybody that's, you know, maybe doesn't know I'm in, I'm not even really play. I play soft. I play league ball. Uh, that's, this is like the tournament team. I don't play. I just go sponsor and pretty much drink Coors Light all day. Um, but anyways, y'all go ahead, put a hand clap in the comments. Um, let us know how you guys are doing. Put a, uh, one of your weekly wins in there because we're getting ready to bring on an amazing guest. Um, he is the president of Reminder Media, and I'll, I'll let him inter um, introduce himself. Um, but everybody give a warm welcome to my guy, Luke Acri. Look, I almost messed it up. I was like, Acri, I got it, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, up, no, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. You know, we were talking before we came on. Super impressed with this group, this Facebook group, because I've had some experience in Facebook groups, and I haven't been great at it. And you guys are just crushing it. The activity within the group, the content within the group. I was able to look at it this morning and I was like, wow, this is incredible. So I'm excited to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. No, I appreciate it. And really it's, hey, it's because, and, and Mr. England, I always got to give a shout out to Ryan. This dude, I mean, Ryan, I think you've literally made every single winning on Wednesday call, um, at least for over half of it. I know one time you had to like bounce early, but shout out to Ryan. And, and all that to say is, you know, this group and everything that is really morphed and turned into be, it's nothing without our members, right? And it, it takes people like Ryan who are here on a, on a weekly, on a daily um, basis, right? Trying to level up, trying to get better. Um, so shout out to our members for sure. And, and thank you, Luke, again, for hopping on, bro. I'm super excited for this call. Um, real quick, who are, who's Luke, right? Uh, for anybody that might not know yeah. you, kind of who are you? Give us a quick little intro. Um, kind of, we'll start kind of yeah. where you're from, and then we'll go to kind of what you're doing now. Yeah, sure. So I'll give you guys kind of the short, high level version, not to bore you. So obviously Luke's the name. I'm the president of a company called Reminder Media. It's really a sales and marketing company. So I've been blessed, man. God's blessed us over the last uh, decade. We've worked with over 100,000 small businesses in about wow. 140 different industries. So what's been really neat is we got our start in real estate. Um, but it's really transcendent from real estate. It's starting to blow up in insurance. Uh, so we're super excited about the things we're seeing in insurance. We work with just under 2,000 insurance agents at this point. Uh, but to kind of take you back. Yeah. To oh, take you oh back. hold real quick, real quick. What's yeah, your uh, weekly win? What's your weekly win? We got to hit that. So, yeah, weekly win. I love this concept too, by the way. Uh, so I think the weekly win I would state is that, man, I have three opportunities on the table right now for acquisition. And for our company acquiring some other companies, and I think back to, you know, years ago, the fact that we're even at this point where I can even be thinking and talking <laughs> to other business owners about acquiring their company is just mind boggling to me. It just shows you that persistence, hard work, belief yes. pays off. You just got to keep going. So that's definitely my yep. weekly win. Love it, man. Love it. Hey, it's all about winning, baby. If that ain't a win. And that's, dude, I love that you say that. Is that, and I, I say this too, and it's even it's even now kind of part of our business model and stuff and how we've set it up is how fast life can change in even just three years, right? Like when I look back, it's like my first daughter would have just been been, uh, been born, right? I would have just been getting married. And now it's like, I've got a second daughter and like, you know, we're doing the things that we are with Redwood and, 
you know, life again. And like, when you look back, even just a few years, like, dude, how did I get in this seat? And you said it, man, I'm just blessed, dude. I am super blessed. Um, but I think, you know, you say that you, le you led with humility, right? And I, I love that. It was before we got to the weekly win, right? It was, man, I'm just, I am so fortunate and so blessed. Um, and I'm, I'm right there with you, bro. So, yeah. um, so take us back kind of dude, where did, where did Luke start? And then I do, um, towards kind of halfway through, I do want to start getting into the podcast and just kind of where that came from. And then we'll yeah. just kind of bounce off each other. Yeah. So I grew up in a family of eight kids. Uh, so something unique about me, my dad's okay. actually a pastor. So they homeschooled us. I was actually homeschooled all the way to college, uh, okay. so homeschooled all the way to college, unique experience. I wouldn't change it for the world. I actually look back on it and see, is it something that it was a gift? And when I was growing up, I saw it more as like, uh, oh, man, I'm being left out or something like that. Now I look back and go, man, it's such a gift because I get to see the world in a different perspective. And, yes. and it made me think mm -hmm. outside the box a little bit. Uh, but um, started um, a business in college called Nextmark Design. So I started with my brother, Dan. My brother, Dan, is an incredible designer and just creator. Like he's the real talent. I'm the mouthpiece, right? So uh, my brother, Dan's incredible creator. So we were doing websites, graphics. Um, my dad was a pastor, like I said. So we were selling churches, websites. We were doing graphics for churches, small businesses. My uncle, who's my current partner in crime, Steve, had started this company, Reminder Media, about 18 years ago, and he was in the print space. And this is probably common to a ton of you because you're all entrepreneurs, is the entrepreneur game is like a roller coaster, man. Like there's a lot of downs, there's a lot of ups. And Steve had just reached a point in his business that, man, he was just at a low. He didn't know what he wanted to do. Successful guy, but just like, I'm not sure where I'm at. Um, him and I obviously had a great relationship. He convinced me, hey, let's join forces. So about almost 11 years ago, 12 years ago now, we joined up forces. And like I said, man, God's just blessed us. It's been amazing. We've grown this to about 300 employees. Um, you know, we'll do over 66 million in revenue this year, Come which on. is unbelievable. And it's been a, a crazy roller coaster still uh, to, to build it. But our real value proposition is this. Like my fundamental belief is that in all of life, the key is relationships. Yes. But if you look at business specifically, because we're all business people, like you want to grow your business this year, you need to ask yourself, how are you at creating relationships, nurturing relationships, and making sure that you're there and you're present? And most entrepreneurs, what happens to us is we get very transactionally focused. So it's all about the product sale. It's all about the transaction and yeah. not about the relationship. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why we're not getting referrals. Then we wonder why we're not getting the renewals that we all so desperately want, right? Yep. So our unique value to the market was when we looked at the market and said, you know, everybody needs to keep in touch with their relationships. Don't have to sell any of you on that. The question is not should you, it's just how. How do right. you do that effectively? Mm. And that's where we decided to come in. Our flagship product is a customizable magazine, which we literally create a magazine for your agency. But the whole concept, because we do digital, we do print, we do a bunch of stuff, is that we're going to give you content that's actually not about insurance. That's actually not about the transaction. It's actually about what your clients would love to receive. Right. Then we're going to strategically brand your agency, right? We're going to put some stuff in there about the agency, but the majority of the stuff is going to be stuff that your consumer enjoys. And the reason why is because think about this. Most of us market based upon what we want, not mm -hmm. based upon what our clients want. 99% mm -hmm. of the client's life is not thinking about insurance. Right. But what we <laughs> Sorry to that. tell that to you guys, but it's not, it's not everybody's weird like me. I love insurance, but exactly. it's like, I promise it's you, like 99%. I <laughs> They're not thinking about it 24 seven. I am because right. it's my life. It's my passion. But what do we do as business owners? We market 99% of the time about insurance or about, you know, whatever mm -hmm. industry you're in. Yep. Instead, if you flip the coin on its head and you go, hey, 99% of the time, they're actually enjoying their life, their family, their occupation, their recreation, their dreams, right? This forward methodology. Let me market to them based upon their likes and their interests. Let me give them items of value, but then strategically come in and drop right. the insurance education occasionally, the product education occasionally. That has been a massive difference maker, man. And we just blown and up and you gotta and you gotta separate yourself and so but real quick y'all i wanted to so luke's talking about relationship right and and everybody knows like they need that relationship piece and then he went into reminder media stuff right now get get this y'all so and now i don't have freaking seven siblings but my brother and i right so it's me and sam we were homeschooled at some point and we only it 
I figured out how to cheat. If I'm being honest, I was young and it just didn't work out. I ended, we ended up going back to school, but we were homeschooled for a stint. My dad was a pastor, right? Like my, and get this, my brother has a computer science degree and I'm the mouth. He does all of our website stuff. That's we amazing. were going out and doing like agent websites and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, no freaking way. Like, and, but that right there, y'all, that's the relationship piece. Do you see how he led with that? Right. And I was instantly able to connect in and was like, yo, dude, no freaking way. And that really subconsciously makes me want to do business with Luke more than I did before. Right. And so I love I just had to say that I was like, dude, no that's freaking so way, bro. That's like, are, are we brothers? Like, <laughs> we might be, man. We might yeah. be the same. Like, that's crazy. I didn't know that either. So that's amazing. Yep. But you're hitting on a golden nugget of marketing is that people don't understand the power of camaraderie. So yes. if you actually like, here's a perfect example. So like on our postcards or on our magazine, you have the option to do a photo, right? Because you're going to brand your business. Well, most people are going to do what? They're going to do the suit and tie photo. That's what they're going to do because that's their headshot. And there's nothing wrong with that. You need a professional headshot. But imagine if you had a dog, like we have two dogs. My wife is a Lord of the Rings nut. So she named our dog Bilbo. And then we have <laughs> the other one named Nora. So if we put our dogs, Bilbo and Nora on the picture with me, I would instantaneously connect more with all the dog owners that I am marketing to. Just subconsciously, the camaraderie would be more. And we all know the saying, know, like, and trust. How do you get known, like, and trusted? Well, this known is obviously getting your face out there. This liked is through camaraderie. It's through rapport. It's through this idea that, wow, Joe is like me. Joe actually appreciates the things I appreciate. I can relate to him. So therefore, I'll listen to him and I'll start building my trust with him, if that makes sense. And that's in. OK, we'll keep going because this is gold, dude. Oh, I'm feeling it now, dude. You can y'all can still create that feeling or that sense of emotion, even though you're not maybe specifically like sitting. Speaking of a dog, my freaking dog you're is in dog. my office with me, dude, Moses. Uh, he's named after Moses Malone. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's you can do that not just like it doesn't have to be them hearing me and i think it just it's really dependent upon how you're marketing to them to get that message across right like obviously it's very easy for people to feel like figure out who joe is when i'm sitting here talking to you kneecap to kneecap whatever it is and and maybe even specific for some life insurance people who are in the house right or who in medicare too really life pnc there's not a lot of people going in house type of thing um but if you're sitting there kneecap to kneecap how did you get there right and I think there's a lot of different ways you can get there versus just buying a lead and working the leads and showing up. Right. And so, you know, with that being said, I want to. So obviously, so Reminder Media was already kind of established when you got there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think Reminder Media has changed since you've gotten there. Right. And I kind of want to talk about that come up and just really and maybe even do go through maybe some of the trials and tribulations of what it was to build from. How many employees was it when you got there to now you guys are at like 300 employees, which. Yep kudos to you. You're like, you're like 300 people, right? And I know you probably, and maybe I know you probably have some things delegated as you've grown the business, maybe touch Hopefully. on that. I think a lot of owners, you know, struggle with that too, is, yeah. Hey, in order to scale, man, you gotta, you gotta find the right people to sit in the seats and then delegate too. So yeah, no, it's, it's great. Time. We did, we had, when uh, we joined together, we had just under 40. So it's grown to about 300. Um, and it's been, oh, obviously the trials and tribulations have definitely been there. Uh, two things that I think have helped me a ton, um, in the journey. And I give Steve a ton of credit for his absolute relentless focus. He has this slogan that he lives by sales isn't everything. It's the only thing. And most people see sales as a dirty word. We all don't, right? We're in the business of sales. Sales is, is giving value to people, right? Solving a problem, giving people the desire that they want, right? That's what you're ultimately doing. But with the relentless focus on sales, it solves all pain. And the problem with entrepreneurs, a lot of times what happens to them is they start focusing operationally and they start thinking about, okay, I've, you know, I've got to focus operationally. I've got to focus on my contracts. I got to focus on my product. And the problem there is if you haven't made any sales, you won't be able to afford to focus on <laughs> right. You actually need to focus fully on the sale when you're just starting out and when you're just moving, you've got to move that needle because that sales will provide income. That income will provide the opportunity to fix your operational inefficiencies, to hire better people than even you, smarter people, to be able to run client experience or whatever. But a huge common mistake 
that everybody makes. And it's here's why, because picking up this phone and making prospecting calls is hard. Facing rejection is hard. And I know everybody's a salesman. You might be listening to this going, I'm not a salesman. Everybody's a salesman because when you have to get up at 4 a.m. and that alarm goes off, that internal salesman starts working and convincing you, oh, I can't, I don't need to go to the gym. I need to go back to bed. You have that Ooh, sale. In you. I like that. You don't want to make the prospecting call. The salesman in you starts telling you, oh, I got to work on my logo. I got to work on the contract. You know, I got to go work on this system. You need to focus on the sale. That has been a massive uh, force in driving our company forward and then has freed us up to be able to focus on all the efficiency pieces of our business. Second thing that I think has really helped me is understanding, look, you're in the people business. In fact, I heard Chet Black, who's a coach in the real estate industry, say this the other day, and it, it really resonated with me. I've never been able to say it so eloquently. He says, I don't focus just on revenue. I focus on people because people move the revenue. And I think as you're building out your team and you're building, and I don't know how many employees each person has, but as I've been building out teams and structures, I realized, man, the four pillars of leadership is one, you got to set a vision. As Ed Milet says, we all heard him at 8% if you were there, your vision has to be big enough so the other people can fulfill their vision for their life within your vision. It's almost evangelical, like he said. Second thing that I've done is that constantly every single day, whether you feel it or don't feel it, you must inspire people to that vision. You must wake up every single day. And Jocko, who wrote the book Extreme Ownership, I paid him to speak to our company during COVID, right? We had to all shut down. We're from home. He's on Zoom with us. He gets real close to the camera. Like that. <laughs> he goes and he tells my sales team, he goes, look, some days you're going to wake up. You're going to feel great. You're going to want to make those sales calls. And he said, good, make them. And he goes, some days you're going to wake up. You're not going to feel it. You're not right. going to make the sales goals. He goes, good, make them anyways. Because a top producer doesn't let their emotions yeah. dictate their activity. And so every single day as a leader, whether you feel it or not, whatever's going on in your life, external, internal, doesn't matter. You inspire to that vision because mm -hmm. the vision is bigger than you. Third thing that I think causes the inspiration in your people is you have to be in the trench. You have to be a servant leader. You have to be able to show people by example that you're willing to eat the crap with them, as they say, right? Make right. the calls with them. And then fourth, and this one is probably the most critical. And for us to go from this $66 million range to $200 million company range for our type of business, yep. it's all in this. It's accountability. Yes. It's accountability every single day. And um, there's a saying out there, you don't get your goals in life, you get your standards, Ooh. right? Yep. You don't get your goals, you get your standards. Your ability to hold yourself accountable and your people accountable is going to be the dictation of ultimately your success. So for us, like take our 120 people on the phones, you have to do four hours of phone time a day or 200 dials or hit three sales. Have to. Requi minimum. Bro, we are we are too similar. You know what mine was? Now, granted, we've shifted now because we're not doing as much outbound, but it was, I mean, it was the one, two, three. You need a hundred dials, two hours, talk time, three policies sold, two out of the three had to be done every day. And I'm like, Ooh. let's go. Because, and that is a driver because I mean, I try to go to the gym um, consistently, right? But it's everybody understands you can't control the result, but you can control the activity. You can control the repetition, right? If you go to the gym, I can't tell you exactly when the body's going to change, exactly when you'll get the biceps, all those things. But I guarantee you, if you keep going, you're one day going to look in the mirror and you're going to be, wow, I'm way more fit and I have way more muscles than I did. I can't right. tell you when exactly you're going to master the sale. I can't tell you when exactly that referral is going to come. But I promise you this, if you don't slack on the activity of keeping in touch with your relationships, making your dials, doing those things, I promise right. you, you're going to wake up one day and look in the mirror and there's going to be a referral. Right. But right. most people slack. Well, and what this is, it's like John Wetmore says, um, and he was on the call not too long ago and he, and he asked me, he goes, so, you know, if you wanted to get better at dribbling a basketball in your, in your offhand, right. Say your left hand, like, what would you do? Right. And it's like, um, you know, you're sitting there and he goes, just like dribble more with your left hand. <laughs> He's like, just do more, like, just do it with your left hand more. And you'll start to figure out now. He's like, I can't tell you how long it's going to take you, but I promise you the activity. Right. And now Ryan's um, chiming in here. 
I freaking love it. Activity, baby. And I know we got a couple of questions here, y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll get to that. And I see something on the podcast. I'll come back to that here in the next couple of minutes when we shift that way. Um, but I wanted to say, because you said accountability. And so we have this house of dreams. It's actually, it's right here. Um, and it's something I hang up because it's, it is literally how we founded Redwood. And, you know, the, the big, the foundation right here, right? It's discipline. And I think accountability paired with discipline. And, you, you know, you talked about it. It's like, hey, there are going to be days when you're on freaking cloud nine. There are going to be days that you are like, I'm not doing it. Right. But it's that discipline to continue to do that. And you pair that with somebody who's going to basically keep you accountable to have that discipline. Right. I think that's so important. And I think I, I just wanted to talk about that because when we're scaling, when even just if, if we're starting a business, right, if we don't have that accountability. I think the accountability is so crucial, right? When starting a business and it's something that can very easily slip away. Everybody can just kind of go to their offices and work because we know what we're supposed to be doing. Right. But like, if we're not meeting, like we're not, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's everybody can kind of oh, yeah. just go do their own thing. Um, and then I think the the discipline, even though maybe you're getting your job done, starts to kind of tread off. Right. Um, and it affects your confidence, man. And when you think about it, like, I've been doing sales a long time now, right? And we do phone sales. We our type of sale. We're calling people, cold calling them, right? And you guys might do some of this, but we're cold calling people. And in 20 minutes, we're trying to get a credit card out of them, right? Because we've delivered such value that they want to mm. sign up for our product. You right. have to have an extreme amount of confidence to cold some call somebody out of the blue that doesn't know you've never heard about your service. And in 20 minutes to 40 minutes, they're handing over billing information because they believe. If right. you don't have integrity with yourself, Right. If you haven't re- fulfilled your promises to yourself, as Ed Milet says, right, you didn't yep. wake up, to go to the gym, you didn't make the activities. You feel like a fake when you're on the phone with that person and you're presenting to them. Right. You feel a lack of confidence. You want to change your activity. You want to change your confidence, man. Start keeping the promises to yourself. Yep. It will influence your confidence in yourself and you'll have that repetition. The other practical thing I think you can easily do is get in these groups like the insurance syndicate, get around people that elevate you. The number one things that have driven my business forward is every time I connect myself relationally to someone who is better than me, someone who has higher energy than myself, someone who is more active than myself. You know, like I worked out so hardcore for our beach week this week. My freaking brother, Dan is like a physique model. So I'm <laughs> in the mirror, ready to go to this beach week, be like, oh, yeah, dude, I've really brought it this year. And I get there, and this dude, he's freaking six pack without even flexing, looks like, yeah. <laughs> you know what it made me realize again is that, oh my gosh, you literally set your standards by your surroundings. Because I wasn't around physique models, I was feeling good about myself, right? I was mm, feeling like, oh, I'm good. really. All of a sudden, I see myself next to him. And I go, man, I have a long way to go. I, what am I doing? I'm weak in the gym. I'm not putting in the extra rep. I'm not going enough times. I'm not eating healthy enough. Apply that to your business. If right. you feel like, oh, man, I, I'm, how do I get this motivation, Luke? How do I stay on my activity? Get around people who are active. Get around the Joes mm-hmm. of the world. Well, and that's – I was just watching – um your podcast, and I know you've done a couple with Cody, it was the second podcast you had with Cody Askins. And he said, you know, he goes, why not like go figure out who's better than you and pay them to know why they're better than you? (laughs) Because it's not really rocket science. I'm like, bingo, right? And I think this kind of, and we we talk about this a lot here at Redwood and, and even here within the group is, you know, the biggest shift for me, even personally, was when we, it was a mindset shift of expense versus investment. We were looking at everything as an expense. Oh man, like, oh man, that's an expense, right? And then when we shifted, and again, it was because we got into this room with a bunch of power players, Cody Askins up in Springfield. And it, dude, when we shifted to investment, man, I I was spending money I didn't have. And I'm like, all right, well, I got a few months to stack up. So it looks like I got to get that money, right? And I'll tell you, there's no better way to succeed when success is your only option, right? And so for us, that investment mindset, and we've never slowed down since. Um, I mean, just ready to go. Right. And so I, I'm sure you guys feel that in, in your business. Yeah. And it's always like um, you have to like the most successful entrepreneurs are the ones that have the burn the ship mentality. Right. If you have the right. burn the ship mentality where it's like there's no going back, I'm all in and constantly. This is why the Grant Cardones of the world say they, they are two times a year. He tries to go broke. Right. He tries to invest all his money. So he, it, 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 that's his. You know, I think it was Michael Burt who talks about prey drive. So when we interviewed him on the podcast, you know, he went over his whole prey drive thing. 
And it, it's so true. It's like you've got to find what that prey drive is in you. Maybe it's the vision for your life. Maybe it's the fear of losing, right? Maybe it's the external trying to do it for somebody else or your family or whatever it is. But like, what is that prey drive that you can resort back to that when you are not feeling it, you can go. And I have this thing that I look at, like every time I'm not feeling it, every time I'm not performing at the highest level, you know, you're a body, mind, and spirit. Something in there is off. So you're either not feeding yourself healthy food, you're not exercising, you're not getting enough sleep. If you think about your mind, you're filling your mind with crap. What TV shows are you watching? What books are you reading? And if you think about your spirit, right, not to get all spiritual on people, I'm a believer, but um, I believe your, your spirit. So what are you doing to figure out, hey, what your greater purpose is, right? right? Success is maybe achieving what you want in life, but real fulfillment comes from living out your purpose. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. And that's, dude, this is the perfect pivot because I know you guys talk a lot about this on Stay Paid, right? And you guys obviously are crushing it in that space. And I know we've got a couple of questions here. So I'll, I'll circle back around to that question on the, um, is on the Apple and YouTube. So I'll, I'll go through that, but um, real quick, right? So guys, obviously you can hear the, you can really just hear the passion. And I think that's one of the most important things in business too, man. If you are not passionate about it, then you might want to look for something else, man. And that's a big thing for us is that, you know, insurance doesn't necessarily need to be your passion, but if it's the vehicle that can get you to your passion, then absolutely, right? You'll you'll have more energy. You'll be more about it, right? Insurance ain't that sexy, right? We already talked about it. Um, but I wanted to kind of now shift to the podcast. Obviously, we're on a podcast. We're just now getting all of our stuff out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all that good stuff. You're light years ahead of us right now, um, but we'll, we'll catch you one of these days, right? As far as, but I mean, the content you put out is amazing. Um, so really you. just, what is the show? Let people know what the show is, where they can find you. And then we've already got a couple questions here as far as ROI through that. But really talk about like, why? Why did, where did, where did, where and why did Stay Paid kind of come from? Yep. So Stay Paid, it's a sales and marketing podcast. So our, our whole value prop is we're trying to interview top producers and then also share from our own experiences of working with people and, and building our own company. What are the best sales and marketing strategies to build a scalable business, right? And it came out of about five years ago. We're almost at 400 episodes. It's kind of crazy. But five years ago, we realized we're signing all these people up. But a little bit of the weakness is that we're trying to get people to execute, but they're not taking action. And right. one of the ways to get people to take action is through inspiration or through bringing in thought leaders that maybe they don't they're not hearing it from you, but they'll hear it from somebody else. And we figured, OK, let's do a podcast in order to try to deliver more value to our clients and hopefully inspire them to take action. That's why we close out every podcast with an action item and literally say the difference between mediocre producers and top producers is top producers take action. So try and inspire action out of people. Here's what I'll tell you what I've learned through the podcast. We've been at it five years, almost 400 episodes. First three years, you guys are, are kicking our butt. We, we had no listeners. Like I think my mom and maybe my seventh. <laughs> All the likes in the comments is like your yeah. grandma and your mom. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> my, my siblings don't even like me enough to, to uh, listen to it. But the point being like, is subscribe, man. Come on. <laughs> every Monday, every Thursday, putting out content, whether people were listening or not, yes. being consistent in it interviewing my friends. I interviewed my own insurance agent. Shout out to Keith Wilson, right? I interviewed my own insurance guy that provides That's help cool. and all that stuff for the company yep. because I was like, I just need to interview all the people that I know. Yep. And it's transition. So now I'm interviewing the Cody Askins of the world, the Michael Burtz of the world, right? These bigger name people because Jared, I uh, at it. Jared, what's his last name? How do you say Jared his? Uh, yeah, yeah, like that one was a, whew, that one yeah, was a good guy, call. I mean, he's amazing, right? And we're getting to interview some of these really, really successful entrepreneurs, business minds out there. And it's because we kept going with it and we focused on the value of it. And there's this concept in marketing that everybody should write down, which is frequency translates in the mind of the consumer to productivity. Like mm. even if your content isn't that great and you you will get good if you're frequent enough, like you right. just can't help it. You refine over time. But if you're frequently enough in front of people, they will translate that to productivity and it will build mind share. And it's like 76% of the time across industries, you will choose the first business that pops into your mind. So when people think PNC insurance, if they think of you, Joe, they're going to choose you 76% of the time. So mm. the name of the game is how do you build mind share? 
And it's what people don't understand is frequency is so much of that. We encourage people, there's no magic number, but there's two good rules that we follow. One is the rule of seven. The rule of seven states in marketing that it takes a consumer seven times to see your brand in order for your brand even to become memorable. If this is the first time you guys are hearing of Luke Acri, then you will forget about me. If I don't get in front of you at least seven more times in a short period of time through email, through text, through um, watching my podcast, whatever it is, you're going to forget about me. You won't remember anything that I say. It's Luke Acri in one ear, out the other. So you need that hit constantly up front. And then when you're nurturing your database, what we have found over the years is about 26 touch points a year okay. Okay. is what tends to produce you know, a good amount of mind share to get referrals and to stay top of mind. We have a client that's making $6 million a year and he's doing 200 touch points. Right wow. now, I think 200 might be a little overkill, but I can't argue <laughs> the result. Yeah, he's got, he's got the results, I guess. Huh? <laughs> I tell people, I use him as an example of like, most people don't do a lot of touch points because they go, I don't want to annoy my clients. Oh, it is extremely hard. Yeah. to do too many touch points. I mean, this guy's doing 200 touch points a year, right. text messages, annual reviews, birthday cards, Thanksgiving cards, our magazines. I mean, emails, he's calculating everything and he's making $6 million. It's extremely easy to do too little. Most yeah. of us touch base once a quarter. Right. That's what most of us do. Right. But if you only touch base once a quarter, are you going to have yeah. that greater relationship? Yeah, Probably not, not that many touch points. That's good. And so let's uh, kind of a, uh, a little bit different of a question, but wanted to answer this so I don't have to keep scrolling up to see it. Um, so does Luke and his CMO find better ROI through their YouTube videos or Apple podcast? Uh, so Apple podcast is where our biggest audience is for sure. So that's where we tend to chart. So we tend to chart in the top 30 constantly on marketing for Apple podcast. <laughs> My wife talking trash. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 200 touch points. I do that in like a month. Oh, Facebook, yeah. baby. <laughs> That's funny. There are, so yeah, I saw Apple. your real name's Joe Frazier. Are you no, named? So, oh, this is good. This is good. Okay. I actually have to say this because a lot of people probably, okay. I've said it before, but a lot of people probably don't know this. Um, so when I created my Facebook and I'm, and I'm still really, I actually just got a punching bag and everything and gloves. Yeah. So I used to be really into boxing. It kind of shifted into fighting like MMA stuff, but I was really into boxing when I created my Facebook back then. So I just put... Joe Fee. Like, oh, did we lose? Sorry, did we lose connection there real quick? Yep, I lost you a second, but I heard you say you were really into boxing. I was and you really, just I was really Frazier. into boxing. My middle name is Dane. Like literally, it's like I was not, my Frazier. Everybody's like, "Oh, what's up, Joe Frazier?" And I'm like, "Oh, you guys know me from Facebook." Well, here's, a fun, here's a fun uh, fact for you: Joe Frazier's son, Joe Frazier Jr., is actually one of my top sales guys. Really? Yeah, so we're based out of Philly here, right? So Joe Frazier's out of Philly. Um, and so he's one of our top Joe Frazier Jr., one of our top top sales guys is is wow. Is, yeah, it's pretty funny. that's freaking that's freaking awesome. I had no idea. That's a that's a quick little um uh, fun, nugget fun there. Gosh. The episode. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he goes, bro, what? Yeah. Um, okay, so but no, let's so let's get back to the podcast, right? And I want to kind of talk so, so for somebody wanting to start, right? Obviously, and, hey, get content out. I think we we all hear that a lot. Man, some content is better than no content, right? Just right. put it out there. But for somebody who maybe is trying to, to refine it a little bit, make it a little bit more clean, like what are some things that you would really recommend to somebody? Like even maybe some things in the studio, type of camera, lighting, sure, like yeah. all that good stuff um, for anybody yeah, that's maybe trying to kick that off. Number one thing from a content perspective that I encourage people to do is it's the easiest way to get a bunch of content for yourself is sit down and write out your FAQs. So that's your frequently asked questions yeah. around your business. Mm -hmm. Right. So FAQs would be, you know, maybe if, um, you know, you're in insurance, maybe it's the different rates. Right. Maybe it's um, the different types of insurance, whatever it is. Right. You write out your FAQs that you get questions on all the time and the market and you guys, is, it's going to play in a little bit. So you can play in timely content with that second area to develop content. I call it the Ford method, right? It's a sales method, but it works really well for content, family, occupation, recreation and dreams, right? That's what Ford stands for. So we opened up the episode talking about relationships and, and camaraderie and our stories and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you can learn that about me if I'm consistently posting content that features my family, that features my about my occupation, my work, what I do with the Reminder Media, my recreation. So like I'm super into music. I actually had a band with my brothers. Um, we traveled around. We thought we were going to be the next big thing. 
didn't quite happen. <laughs> but uh, I'm super into music. So I play at my church every Sunday. Like I can post that type of stuff. And then my dreams, what am I trying to accomplish? What are my passions? What's my vision? Like the vision I want for my life is to empower people to live a life of freedom. And that's uh, spiritually, that's um, financially in all these different areas. If I just take those two simple things, putting my frequently asked questions together in content and constantly documenting my family, occupation, recreation, dreams, that is going to be a ton of different content. And to steal from Gary V right? The godfather of social media. You know, he right. says, document, don't create. Because when you create, mm. you run out of ideas very fast. And then it gets really painful. If you document, you're just documenting your life. So the framework that I would use is the Ford methodology and the frequently asked questions methodology. And I would Good. also use the common 80-20 rule when it comes to 80% of your content that you should put out should actually be more just content about your life, content about your dreams, content about those things. 20% is your business. So perfect example, if you go to my Instagram, you know, one of my stories I posted yesterday is of my daughter. My wife was feeding my daughter lunch and she's, my wife was an NSYNC fan back in high school. Kind of crazy. Uh, but uh, <laughs> playing NSYNC's Bye 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 to my daughter eating and my daughter starts waving, right? Bye Bye Bye. And it got the most likes of all my stories, of all my past stories. Why? Why? Because it connects with people, right? And now they know Luke's a father. Is it going to earn me marketing business on that simple post? No, but yep. it is over time as people bond to me, they get to know me and like me. So content wise, that's what I would suggest. Consistency and medium wise, um, uh, there's so much thought out there. Like if you follow the Grant Cardones of the world, or these TikTok gurus and stuff like that, they say, man, try to post three to four times a day because the more frequent you are there, the more chance you have. I haven't seen any lift. We tried uh, posting multiple times a day at some points. We didn't see a ton of lift, but our big problem there with that was we couldn't stay consistent in it. And so instead of beating myself up, what I would tell people to do is pick something that you can consistently commit to. Good. One post a day tends to be something that people can commit to. It's trying to do one post a day um, with their content on their social channels and doing content what's called repurposing. So if yep. you film this right here, right, you can chop this up. Yep. You can make it into multiple pieces of content. You can also post it on your LinkedIn, your Facebook, your Instagram, what other channels you're doing and just repurpose your content. So my content on TikTok that's doing extremely well, I take that and I put it on my Instagram, right? And I, I just changed the day that I'm putting it, but I put that same content on there. And it's actually a great way to see what does well on Instagram versus what does well on TikTok. And, you're right? and that's things. part of it too, is, is testing it. Test it, right? And that's what I tell people, hey, just try it. And guess what? Like, especially because I do a lot on like Facebook group stuff. And I'm like, I'll go through, hey, go join this group. And and I was like, and guess what? If it doesn't work, you can just leave the group. <laughs> hey, go you find another group. group. You can or delete the post if you wanted to. You can yeah. do all that stuff. Here's it's, a exactly. tip for you. So if you're in growth mode from a content perspective, meaning you're trying to add followers, um, I would really encourage you, make sure you're taking advantage of Reels within uh, Instagram. Reels are Instagram avenue right now to reach people that you don't know. That's where the Explore page is headed for you page. They're trying to kind of mimic TikTok on that. So yep. you should be posting reels all the freaking time. If you are trying to just engage your audience, right, then you maybe can just do pictures or just do stories and stuff like that. But if you're really trying to build your following, reels is where it's at. And I would be posting reels consistently. On TikTok, I would be on TikTok. I held off from being on TikTok for the longest free. Hold on, man. My wife, my wife's on the call, dude. Don't be getting me in trouble now. <laughs> I'm I'm still holding off. Look, I'm not going, got, Maria. I'm telling you. <laughs> you got to be on TikTok, man. The organic nature of TikTok right now, the organic reach is unbelievable. And I'll tell you a hack. I'm no expert on TikTok, but we've had a couple viral videos. Like I think our video just went to 4 million, one of them. And we've had um, a bunch that have been in the hundreds of thousands and then like four or five that have been in the millions. And what we have found is that the number one thing that drives engagement on TikTok, uh, Joe's going on TikTok. I saw that comment. <laughs> yeah, you can do your little dances, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
but the number one driver of engagement for both Reels and TikTok, and this is probably across platforms, but is engagement time on your post. So mm-hmm. your if your post goes viral, it's because TikTok has seen behind the scenes that people are actually engaging with your post. Kind of simplistic, right? It's obvious. So think about that from a content creation lens. How do you get people to stay on your video a little bit longer so it influences the algorithm so it pushes that video to more people? Well, one of the easy hacks to do this is open up your videos with you pointing to a question. I was I was just about to say, I was like, that's why you do the int- exactly. every intro like that. Okay. Because if I put up a, a big question, like one of my ones that went viral was, this real estate story is going to blow your mind, mm. right? And it's just me pointing to this. And, and I think we waited like two seconds or whatever. But that two seconds hooks almost everybody. And now the algorithm is going, wow, Luke's getting a ton of watches. Where most people, it's milliseconds, right? You're just swiping through milliseconds right. on something until it grabs your attention. And that's the, been the key trying to hook people. Does it work every time? No. But if you think about it through that lens of how do you put out something that makes people have to wait a little bit for that answer. And in your industries, man, that's something fantastic that you can do because you could talk about saving them money, right? On their insurance. Right. You could like, that could be your thing. How do you save the most money on your insurance? Yep. And then you give them the answer, right? Or whatever right. your topic is, find something that's kind of like clickbait, but you're really delivering on the answer there at the end. So that's a and that's and do. that's exactly what I wanted to say is that you know you said the word attention, and I think that that is the game changer right there is when you start to get attention. But that's the thing when you start to get attention, make sure you can back that attention up, right? And and I think a lot of times I've seen and and really. You know, some some big organizations I've seen, like so the attention was it wasn't the right attention, man. Like they were getting the wrong attention. And I think that's because of what everything was going on in the back end where there wasn't really everything. Everything was like and we talk about this. Our sailboat in the House of Dreams is that um, and it's right here is basically, you know, what people see above the water and what people don't see above the water. Right. And that attention is what man, that's a whew, that's a baller sailboat but then there's no keel to keep it stable, right? As soon as they untie from the, it's toppling over, right? Um, And I love that you said, and I wanted to circle back too, because you were talking about um, just really with your, um, with your kid and every, and that was the most, and that's, I love that too, because here's the thing you you said that, well, Hey, maybe eventually like that to me is what would again, drive me to want to do business with you because I'm a father of, you know, and I've got my daughters and, you know, I, I say that to say is because, people do business with people, right? And we've talked about it, but that's a big thing for me is that nobody knows unless you're putting it out there, unless you're trying to like, just let the, give them something to relate to. And that's a big thing for me is just because I'm an insurance doesn't mean I'm a freaking robot. And I'm, t- oh, and right. I promise you y'all 75% of the country, right? Like they all think we're a freaking robot or we're a scam or we're something. But when then you give them bits and pieces of like, Hey, yo, look, like, and I tell her like, Hey, I have the same bills. I've got this, you know, it's like, we, we have kids, we, we go and travel, we go to con, we go to Brooks and Dunn concerts and stuff like that. Right. And, um, and that's also another thing you said, like you guys are my, dude, my brother and I used to like play music together and freaking, I would never that good, but I did weird, piano yeah, and guitar. It's a little weird, man. We live this dude. Life. That's what I'm like, what the heck? Where are you from again? Um, uh, well, there's wild another to me. piece of content tip that I'll give you in there of like, we talk about showcasing your family and you, that helps you not just be the insurance guy. Well, another way you can not just be the insurance guy is, you know, what the podcast Stay Paid has done for us. It's connected us to so many other relationships. We're not just telling our story, Josh and Luke's story, Reminder Media story. We're telling the story of our guest. So yep. what an opportunity for you content wise to think of your affinity partners, people who in your community you're partnered with. So maybe that's the elder care attorney. Maybe that's the uh, a uh, or the security company. Maybe it's the real estate agent, the mortgage broker, the car dealership, the auto mechanic, the local coffee shop. Like I've interviewed some, some big time real estate agents. And one of their big drivers of leads is they do a review on the local restaurants. So they mm-hmm. literally go and kind of like a, a bar store, stool sports yep. or whatever, review some pizza. Yep. They do that type of idea for the local restaurants with their sandwiches and stuff like that. And it's a huge hit. Why yep. is that beautiful? It's a piece of content that's not just salesy. It's local and relevant. 
it connects you to the business owner who, who yep. do you want to know in your community? All the freaking business right. owners. Right. And so your affinity partnerships are such a huge piece of what your content yes. should be. Yep. Yep. And that's, you know, and nobody can hate on somebody who supports local either. You know, that was a big thing for us when we were getting going and, and you, you lawyer talk about restaurants, like we would do like giveaways and stuff during COVID. Um, Cause we knew people were tied on dollars and Hey, what, let's get you a free meal. Right. And then, but we used Love it. That. So you have to go like the, the business, you know, the business owner's business page. And I got some of this from Brandon Smith, um, which he, he's probably on a plane getting home from Nashville right now, but you know, but then it was then they had to go like the business page. They had to like our page. And then we also did um, where they would get. And again, this is from Brandon where, hey, here's the gift card. You won the gift card, but go take a picture at the restaurant, you know, with your family enjoying the meal that we just paid for. Tag the business owner and shout out or tag like check in to Majority's right and then tag Good. Redwood. And then if you do that, then we'll send you an additional $25 to Starbucks. Right. Yeah. And so again, just, just helping promote that. And wow, man, dude, we've had so many freaking, dude, we've had so many gold nuggets on this freaking show, man. I wish, um, I want to respect everybody's time. I know we're going, this is right about when we um, typically close out. So um, for the last maybe minute or two, if you guys have any Q and a, feel free to put it in there. Um, but then Luke, really, how can they find you, man? Um, give, give them a refresher. Hey guys, it's reminder media, but how can they find you if they want to maybe talk with you to do business? Um, yep. what would be the best way to do that? Yeah. would love obviously to connect with all of you. Super appreciative Joe of the opportunity, man. I love what you guys are doing. I love the show, love the group. So I'm glad to be a part of it. Um, you can find me probably most active on social at Luke Acre. So you can find me at Luke Acre on Instagram. You can find me Luke Acre on LinkedIn and you can find me at Luke Acre RM stands for reminder media on Facebook, on TikTok. We are stay paid underscore podcast. So if you want to get on TikTok and you know follow or look at what we're doing, and then you can I'm not check- gonna I'm not gonna find you there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can check out the podcast at staypaidpodcast.com. Uh, so that's where we get to interview really great producers. Joe, we're gonna have to have you on the show, man. I already Dude, know. I would love, I would love yeah. to be on, man. Um, and y'all really Again, it's Reminder Media. I would definitely go check them out. They're doing some really cool things. Um, And it it really, I promise you probably almost maybe everybody on this call, except for maybe Miss Merwin. I think you guys might be doing something with them. Um, But for the most part, we're not, our marketing and how we're doing it is is way different than what Reminder Media is doing. And they're doing it in such a unique way um, to where it really does promote the business, but it gives, it gives the content that people are actually trying to read, right? It's not just all insurance, 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 but it's, um, it is a great way to highlight your business and then also give them something to relate to, right? So that then maybe they do want to, um, to push and do more business with you, right? Um, and refer you out or hand out the magazine and all that good stuff. So definitely check out Reminder Media. Thank you, Luke, for hopping on, man. Um, It's been a blast. Definitely won't be the last time. I would love to hop on Stay Paid. Um, But with that being said, y'all, hey, it's Wednesday, right? So it's Wednesday. It ain't Friday. It ain't, to me, there ain't even a day anymore. All I know is that it's Wednesday. Keep going. The week ain't over. Keep crushing it. Keep hitting your goals. Write your goals down, right? Tap into what everything Luke just said. Um, Go back through. If you're catching the replay, rewatch this video. I'm going to go back through and rewatch this by the end of today. I guarantee it um, because of how many gold nuggets are in it. So thank you, Syndicate members. Again, thank you, Luke. And I hope everybody has an amazing rest of your week. We'll see you guys next week. Later, y'all.